Hi, my name is Dr. Carly Haug. In this video, I will describe how to generate a best case, worst case ICU graphic aid. To get the most out of this video, you will want to have access to the patient story document and a blank graphic aid template. This exercise works best if you complete the graphic aid for this patient's story before watching the video and then compare yours to how we have filled it out. But this video can be used on its own after briefly reading the patient's story. Let's get started. Briefly, this is a 38-year-old woman with a bad vascular complication after an appendectomy who was transferred emergently to our facility for additional surgical intervention. She was admitted to the ICU last night. We are now rounding on her the next morning after surgery, and I'm filling out the graphic aid on rounds. Each column represents a day in the ICU. I start on day two because this is the first day that we are rounding on her, as well as her second day in the ICU. And we want to capture the events of yesterday. On 8-2, I write surgery for bleeding yesterday because that was a major event. I am placing the star on the middle of the line because there's a fair amount of uncertainty here. Her story could go either way at this point. Next, I write a few notes around the star about what it will look like if things go as best we are hoping. She will need a few more operations, probably one tomorrow. She'll need some time in the ICU. She'll need a few months in rehab. We can probably get her home if things go well, and it will probably take six to eight months for her to fully recover, but we think she will be much like she was before all of this. For the worst case, I write that she could die. As a teaching point, I cluster the story around the star to better indicate where we are in the range of what is possible, and so the overall trajectory becomes more clear. The next day on rounds, not a lot has changed overnight. I place a zero or no change as the event. I place the star in roughly the same position as the day prior. You may notice that she got a central line placed, but I don't put it as an event because it doesn't change how we might imagine things eventually playing out. This will also save you time. As a teaching point, because placing a central line does not significantly change the patient's trajectory, I do not write it as an event. Because the details of the best case scenario are the same as yesterday, I'm not going to rewrite those today. The following day on rounds, we note she was hypoxic overnight and were concerned for trolley. But Instead of writing trolley or hypoxia, I write lungs struggling as the event because I want to use patient-friendly language. I then move her star lower. Next, I write a few notes around the star about what it will look like if things go as best we are hoping. She still needs one to two more surgeries to close her abdomen. She probably needs more time in the ICU, maybe four weeks instead of two to three because of her lungs. Getting a trach is now also within the range of possibility, and her hospitalization and recovery will be long, but it's reasonable to assume that she could return to her life as it was before. Her worst case is the same, so I draw the arrow across to save on time. A couple of notes about her story. She did return to the OR yesterday for a planned washout and abthera replacement. Regarding her new acute kidney injury, we don't know yet which way it will go, so I do not list it as an event right now. In the best case, this AKI won't change the story. She will likely get through it without it affecting her. So, as a teaching point, like the central line, a planned operation and AKI do not significantly change the patient's best case trajectory. So, I do not write them as events. As we're rounding on 8-5, there were no significant events yesterday or overnight. She seems to have bounced back quickly from the insult to her lungs and were feeling overall more optimistic today. So for the event, I write a little better as this will be the most helpful framework for the family. 
I moved the star up slightly, and I also want to detail parts of her hospitalization that have not changed. So I write a few notes around the star about what things will look like if they go as best we are hoping. She'll still probably need two to three weeks in the ICU. She could get the breathing tube out in about a week. She'll still have a long recovery, and she most likely will be like she was before in about a year. As a teaching point, it's helpful to say that things are a little better and also remind everyone there is still a long journey ahead in the patient's recovery. Her worst case is the same, so I draw the arrow over. When we're rounding on 8-6, even though there are no new events, I repeat what I wrote on 8-5 because this is a new sheet and the sheets might get separated. But please don't spend time rewriting if there are no new events. I include some more detail in the worst case, like she'll have a long recovery and I reiterate that she could still die. Regarding the star, be mindful of where a star's placement is from a week prior and ensure it is in the appropriate position on a new sheet. When we're rounding on 8-7, we note she was stable yesterday without significant events. So I write a zero for the event and place the star in the same position. Rounding on August 8th, we note she went back to the OR yesterday for abthera exchange. I write a zero for the event and place the star in the same position. You might want to write, surgery went well for the event on 8-8, but I don't because we have described this before and things are going according to plan. There is nothing new. I draw an arrow across from 8-7 to 8-8 to indicate no change in the story from what I wrote on 8-6. To reiterate, if something hasn't changed the star or best case story, it does not need to be written down as an event. Now it is 8-9. Although TPN was started yesterday, this also does not need to be written down as an event because it does not impact her overall story right now. Even though we can't feed her, we think this will get better and won't ultimately change her best case. I write a zero again. Since her overall story is the same, the star remains in the same place. In the future, we will know more. I draw an arrow over. Rounding on 810, it seems we've had some stability, but she has been failing daily SBTs this week. It is more clear today that she won't liberate from the vent. This is the third day in a row she has failed her SBT, so now I have more information about her trajectory. For the event, I choose to focus on her breathing as this is going to change her story, not the surgery that occurred yesterday. I write, too weak to get the breathing tube out as the event. Other possible events are, didn't pass the breathing test. I lower her star today for this reason. Since the story is changing, I add more detail. She'll still need two to three more weeks in the ICU. She is finished with surgery for her belly, but she may need a tracheostomy, which is important for the family to know. She'll likely need to go to an LTAC afterwards, and we're still hopeful she'll be mostly like she was before, maybe in about a year, acknowledging that she may have some ongoing health issues. Finally, I draw arrows over to indicate the worst case scenario remains unchanged. Later in the day on 810, her acute kidney injury was worsening and DVTs were noted on the ultrasound of her bilateral lower extremities. Now, rounding on 811, we, sh we see that the story is changing for the worse. The most significant events driving change today are the worsening AKI and DVTs that occurred yesterday. So I write clots and kidneys failing for the event today. I take note of where the patient's star was at the end of the last sheet and place it a little bit lower today. I then cluster information about the range of what is possible and what we're worried about. She'll need more weeks in the ICU, maybe four to five. She'll need an LTAC for a couple months after. It will take her a long time to recover. We are more uncertain that she will be like she was before, so I add, may be less able to do things by herself today. Finally, for the worst case scenario, 
we are worried that she could die soon. Overnight, she has had no events. I write a zero on 812. I place her star in roughly the same position. The details of her story are the same, so I do not copy them over. Unfortunately, by 813, things have changed for the worse. I chose stroke and bleeding problems, as this sums up her most serious events from yesterday. Of note, when patients decline like this, this is an opportunity for clinicians to discuss continuation of life-sustaining treatments and poor prognosis. Sometimes, surrogates will make a decision to withdraw or withhold life-supporting treatments, and the patient will die rather than progress to this point. Some families will not consent to withdrawal of life-supporting treatments, even though the clinical team has expressed their concerns that the patient is dying. Rather than repeatedly telling the family she is dying, we can focus on what we are hoping for now, that we will be able to keep her alive for a few more days. I lower her star on 813 as we are trending towards the worst case scenario. Over time, Uncertainty is decreasing, and the plausible story of recovery is less and less likely. I then add in details about the best case. Now, if we can reverse these processes, she will spend a very long time in the ICU. She would also still need an LTAC, and she may not be able to walk or talk well, but may survive years. I update the worst case, writing that we are worried she could die in one to two days. As a teaching point, when a plausible story of recovery is less likely, we can add more precision to the worst case scenario, like she may die in as soon as one to two days. Rounding on 814, she's going into multi-system organ failure. I note this as the event, organs shutting down. You could also write, needing more life support, to convey the impending circulatory collapse to families. There is less uncertainty today. I lower her star more towards the worst case scenario. I then write, we may be able to keep her alive for some more days, but it is hard to imagine her getting out of the hospital. On 8.15, her lungs and organs are failing. I write this as the event. I move her star next to the worst case scenario. It's important to know that in the best case, we can maybe keep her alive for another day or two. I write that down. For the worst case scenario, we are worried that she could die today. Thank you for your time and attention to our video. Hopefully you have refreshed your memory of how to use the tool or learned something new. If you're not sure why we made specific choices or you think your choices make more sense, please give us a shout. See you next time.